your uh, expert speaker, Dr. Subramanian Natation sir. Sir is a professor of Department of Pharmaceutics in Naipur, Kolkata. And sir is pleased to deliver a topic on trends in multifunctional heteronostic systems. Sir, I welcome you, sir, and it's a privilege for us to be on this platform on this day. And to give an honorary interaction, I request my fellow colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Deepak Sairam, sir, to do the proceedings. Sir, I request you to do the honorary introduction and over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good morning to everyone. So, hope all of you had your breakfast. Uh, myself, this is Deepak Sairam working as assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Analysis in San Francisco College of Pharmacy. So today I'm glad to invite our today's speaker, Dr. Subramanian Natation, sir. Sir, a very good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. So coming to the introduction of Dr. Subramanian Natation, sir. Sir was currently working as a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutics Naipur, Kolkata. Sir got his B Pharma from Dr. MGR Medical University and M Pharma from Anamalai University, Chidambar. Sir got his PhD from Jadapur University, Kolkata, and he has 22 years of teaching and research experience and served as Dean in charge. Deepak sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, so I'm sorry, so I'll start from the beginning. Yes, good morning. So today I'm glad to invite our today's speaker, Dr. Subramanian Natation sir. So coming to the intro of Natation sir, sir was he's, uh, currently working as a pro professor in the Department of Pharmaceutics, Naipur, Kolkata. Sir got his B Pharma from Dr. MGR Medical University and M Pharma from Anamalai University, Chidambaram. Sir got his PhD from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Sir has 22 years of teaching and research experience and served as Dean in charge, University College of Engineering, Arialur, and Zonal Officer, Zonal Coordinator in Anna University Examination System. Sir has been awarded a voice cast fellowship by DST from Government of India for postdoctoral research at the School of Pharmacy, University of Missouri, Kansas City, USA. Sir has received a research grant of more than 1.5 crore from various funding agencies such as DST, DBT, NASF and ICMR New Delhi. Dr. Subramanian has won Best Innovation Award in the year 2013 from Anna University, Chennai, and Young Scientist Fellowship Award from Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology, Chennai. SAR has two granted US patent, one PCT patent, and one granted Indian patent to his credit. SAR has 75 peer reviewed publications and 15 book chapters to his credit. And Dr. Subramanian, sir, is the reviewer of many peer reviewed journals and invited speaker at various conferences, seminars, and symposiums. Deepak sir, you are in mute. Then just I had concluded the intro. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, thank you for joining on this day and uh, please continue with the talk, sir. I hope you can able to see my slides. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning to one and all who has connected with us in this Google Meet on this early morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Deepak for his uh, wonderful introduction about me as well as I take an opportunity to thank uh, uh, Susitra for, for inviting me to uh, give a talk on this platform, as well as I thank uh, Seven Hills College of Pharmacy Management for uh, arranging 
this kind of an uh, programs during this uh, pandemic period so i have been given the title of an uh, multifunctional prognostic systems uh, in which i like to give an some light uh, uh, what is it and what are the parameters we need to just consider over there uh, during the development and what is that uh, imaging techniques we should understand uh, during that development of an uh, prognostic systems and uh, finally some of our uh, experimental data i like to share with you it may not be a multifunctional but it has a sign of functional prognostic systems with this i like to a uh, small introduction i like to go into that title um the word uh, prognostics is a combination of and two words which has been uh, called as a sign therapeutic and diagnostics the word may be a coin of and two things but it is serves and this wonderful area or an upcoming area of an precision medicine this are uh, therapeutic as well as and diagnostic which has been coined alike prognostics now there is a big debate is also going on whether we need to incorporate that g in that word or not there are a recent article which is published in 2021 which suggests that uh, we need to incorporate that g over there which will gives better clear information about an uh, the coining of a word called prognostics anyway in case of uh, drug delivery conventional drug delivery we face lot of issues particularly we can take it as a cancer treatment wherein we are unable to target the drug specifically into cancer tissues as well as the required amount of the drug is not able to present at that uh, cancerous tissue that is at one part the other part uh, due to this that normal healthy cells will also be get affected in order to avoid that the people are using certain imaging techniques where that cancerous cells are there say for an example i am keeping it um, cancerous cells are there then they will identify that cancerous cells then they will able to deliver that drug particularly into an cancer cells now one part will be delivering that medication in another part will be identifying that uh, disease cells so that both will happen simultaneously so that we will be able to deliver and required amount of the drug into that disease cells uh, that kind of the system will be called as a sand uh, prognostic system this prognostics will aim to diagnose and treat the disease at the right time under active monitoring so that if it is at active monitoring is there we can able to avoid that toxicity to that uh, normal cells or an general cells so what is the advantage of this why we need to focus on it this prognostics is not only guided therapy which is also become an patient centered one very which provide the transition from an conventional medicine to contemporary personalized and precision medicine approach using a <coughs> nano science we can able to unite the diagnostic as well as the and therapeutic systems therapeutic applications so that we can also called as a nano prognostics which able to this prognostic system is able to achieve that systemic circulation avoid 
host defense systems or an pipos that reticular endothelial system and deliver the drug and diagnostic agents at the targeted sites to diagnosis and treat the disease at a cellular and molecular level slides is not moving sir you just use a mouse cursor uh, to move the slides now it's moving and no sir huh no sir it is not moving uh, yeah yes sir. yes sir it is moving yeah so if the problem is there let me know so that then and then we can okay sir okay sir. yeah yes so this uh, simple example we can take it as a sign combination of an a radio nucleotide labeled the agents with the drug which is currently in practice also and later i'll give it as a sign examples now there are an, two possibilities in this uh, area of an prognostics one thing the first one is a uh, therapeutic product followed by a diagnostics very well the drug shows the efficacy but it is not able to show that efficacy in all the cases so we need to adopt and some diagnostic system to identify that patient uh, for whom that drug will work it out that is an one category so that first we'll identify the efficacy of the product <coughs> then you can identify the diagnostic system then these two can be combined that is one in another way we can diagnose the product diagnostic product can be developed and to which that therapeutic agent can be combined where the diagnostic that distinguishes the patient or the disease type and specifically allows the therapy into a particular organ tissues or receptor level so by combining these two we can develop that system which is called as a sign prognostics which can be possible by that use of an nanotechnologies one such example we can say that that is an herceptin drug targeted into an herceptin along with that we can also test that hercept test for the treatment of an breast cancer now you can see from this figure this is a some population of an people targeted people where the where the drug diagnostic tool can be used to differentiate that uh, target or target population whether it is they are positive for the target or a negative for the target if they are negative for the target we can go for an conventional therapy if they are positive for the target uh, then we can adopt an a uh, targeted uh, drug delivery systems or combined with uh, uh, diagnostic tool sir slide is not moving yes sir how it is okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yes. I'll keep it like that so that it will be easier. Um, now, what is happening? What is that altogether? What is the concept of these uh, prognostic systems as well as and uh, drug delivery through and targeting? Now, if simplest examples we have shown over here as a and a diagnostic or an imaging system. of an quantum dot to which uh, that targeting ligand can be binded or otherwise to which the and a drug can be conjugated with this quantum dot along with that any targeting molecule can be attached or that entire system drug diagnostic agent quantum dot can be encapsulated in a nano system either it may be an polymeric system or an lipid based systems whatever it may be or an micelle surfactant based systems then it that can be made it uh, to which the targeting moieties can be attached that can be injected to one person 
where which will be able to escape that uh, reticular endothelial system and reaches the target specific cells and enters into that cell and deliver that therapeutic agent now in that cases only after delivering of these uh, agents we can able to take out that cells from that body we can identify whether it has been cured or we can identify that is happening in a conventional cases whereas in case of a prognostic system once you administered you can make an image of a particular organ in a receive uh, in a receive imaging of that uh, person or an animal so that we can record what is happening at an real time that is that advantage of this uh, ethnotic systems now if you are using a conventional we will use a sun fluorescent microscopic or a different uh, depending upon that uh, agent what we will be coupling with that the nano system we need to choices that uh, imaging system for that therapy now the word multifunctional prognostic system is has the capability of an different functionality as well as personalized disease management uh, by combining their diagnostic and therapeutic capability into a single bio compatible and bio degradable particles these systems are able to offer and sustain and controlled release of that molecules as well as able to achieve that targeted delivery and these multifunctional systems are able to have high transport efficiency by endocytosis mechanism or stimuli responsive drug delivery or a small delivery we would say that as well as these systems are able to provide an synergistic performance not only by that uh, drug chemotherapy we can also use the sand uh, heat or and light sources or an electrical source which will be converted into an light and uh, heat sources which will be able to provide and therapeutic efficacy so this multimodality can also use for a diagnosis and therapies in overall which can be able to deliver the drug into a specific area and provide an required therapy now what is happening in this systems so we will have a different therapeutic agents we need to be incorporated either if you take it as an a uh, cancer which will be an uh, for an example anti cancer drugs or we can enhance uh, incorporate and photosensitizer where you will perform an photodynamic therapy this therapeutic agents may be conjugated loaded to that existing nanoparticles wherein this existing nanoparticles may be an quantum dot or an ion oxide nanoparticles or gold nanocatures to which we can also conjugate that contrast agents such as an fluorescent dyes optical or magnetic particles and various isotopes to an existing therapeutic nanoparticles either way either we can conjugate the drug sorry to the existing system of diagnostic system or you can put up the probes or a diagnostic system can be conjugated with an therapeutic nanoparticles in both the cases we can able to conjugate then which will become such a multifunctional or that entire systems can be encapsulated in a single uh, flat form or an uh, carrier molecules different flat forms has been exploited for that development of an prognostics 
we would see that uh, radioisotopes, genetic materials, quantum dots, dendrimers, liposomes, magnetic nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles, microbubble system, porous nanoparticles, micelles, drug polymeric conjugates, and antibodies assigned targeting ligands. A lot of things, a lot of systems, a nanoscale uh, system has been exploited for these purposes. Now, when you are coming into this uh, system, different system, we need to consider whether these systems are able to provide a better targeted delivery. Whether it's able to, these particles, nanoparticles are able to provide an image guided delivery or we can go with a magnetic targeting or this delivery system can be used as a sand light sources or a thermal sources or combination of that approach can be adopted for which we need to select that uh, proper nanoparticle system this composition of that nanoparticles will be depends upon that required physical chemical properties of the nanoparticles since which will play an important role in uptake and interaction with that cancerous cells. So, we need to select that nanoparticle material as well as the composition of that nanoparticles, the size of that nanoparticles, charge and hydrophilic and lipophilic characteristics, surface chemistry of this system need to be defined and selected according to that requirement. In what area we are going to target, whether we will be going to target cancerous tissues, whether we will be going to target brain tumor or brain tissues, or whether we will be going to uh, scan or image and deliver the drug into an uh, cardiovascular uh, tissues. According to that, this system or that nanoparticle uh, materials need to be selected. That will also conjugated with a proper targeting moieties so that uh, we can enhance that cellular uptake rate of these nanoparticles. And in order to keep them into that systemic circulation, we can make an regulation or important hydrophilic nature so that which will be in the system for longer period of time. So what kind of an, uh, synthetic strategies has been currently adopted for that fabrication of an multifunctional nanoparticles? The first case preparing a nanoparticle nanoparticle assembly that means that drug encapsulated nanoparticles can be combined with an diagnostic particulate systems but that means an conjugation of a nanoparticle and nanoparticle assembly this is mostly happened with an inorganic materials that different combinations can be possible by that uh, different synthetic method. The first thing called as a seed mediated growth, wherein that upconversion nanoparticles has been developed. For an example, sodium cadolidium fluoride or an sodium yttrium fluoride or sodium erbium fluoride that can be made into an precursor to which we can be able to make it as an core and shell particulate systems also. Or we can have that cold cell over that uh, 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 super paramagnetic ion oxide uh, spions. That is a seed mediated. From the seed, we can uh, develop that system that both that nanoparticulate systems can be developed or a metal coordination or chelation can be done. Initially, we will make that shell and over which, or that sorry, core particle over which we can make that cell. That is an one approach. In another approach, we can make an uh, porous systems 
that slicker systems say for an example in which we can incorporate uh, the diagnostic system one such approach is shown over here that is a cold cell and silica where that gold sheets are first absorbed onto that silica surface through a gold amine coordination system wherein that gold nanoparticles is conjugated or functionalized with an amine which is then on exposure into that porous silica surface due to this uh, amine conjugation which will be entrapped that is an uh, metal coordination then otherwise we can have it an a uh, gold nanospheres over which uh, that iron oxide material can be coated in another approach we can develop and systems by using an biological or an chemical bonds wherein gold nanospheres can be linked with an iron oxide particles by a biotin septravidin interaction or that uh, iron oxide can be linked to an silica by using an chemical bonds or in certain cases that hydrophobic or an electrostatic attractions can be used particularly the conjugation of an quantum dots uh, iron oxide with an phospholipid pick systems particularly in case of an uh, liposomes uh, manufacturing will use the same uh, that conjugation by using an electrostatic or an hydrophobic interaction so uh, there are in certain system the physical entrapment uh, can be used uh, to conjugate that uh, metal particulate systems uh, now the slide has been changed anyone can address it sir slide is not moving sir yeah. yes now now it is moving there is an another uh, possibilities that is an nanoparticles can be conjugated with an uh, small molecules where we can use a sand uh, different uh, nano system which can be conjugated with uh, dye molecules isotopes drug molecules or an si or an a mrna peptide or several targeting moieties or ligands can be utilized <laughs> depending upon that functional requirement these molecules are loaded into a different quantities at the center of surface of that particulate systems uh, major categories of an through which it can be achieved or chemical conjugation and physical absorption say for an example that um, sulfur cyanine 5 or an sulfur cyanine uh, 5.5 can be conjugated into an quantum dots uh, or an iron oxide by using an chemical conjugations say so for one classical example or shown over here that is a san copper 64 is uh, radio nucleotide tied has been conjugated to an ion oxide through an dotto which is a san uh, di decocycline tartaric acid has been used as a san conjugating ligand uh, to combine with the ion oxide particles or that electrostatic interaction can be utilized for an example plasmid dna can complex with an silica nanoparticles or mesoporous silica or doxorubicin is conjugated with an phospholipid uh, pick micelles by using an hydrophobic interactions any of that uh, synthetic strategies can be adopted to prepare this multifunctional nanoparticulate systems as like we earlier we mentioned it, these systems can be used or having that capability of an passive targeting uh, without attaching and targeting moieties if you are able to if you attach or if you need a specific targeting we can how or uh, go for an active targeting where we will use a different targeting uh, ligands once 
now you will be ready with that uh, system so, diagnostic system which can able to uh, give a therapeutic activity as well as and diagnostics uh, capabilities so what kind of an imaging techniques uh, you will be going to adopt it whether that imaging technique is capable to give an information what we require that is that uh, important point for which currently uh, in clinical as well as in an animal will be using a different imaging techniques uh, to understand that working of an diagnostic system so, there are some of that imaging techniques are widely used for an radio nucleotide imaging positron em emission tomography or simply called as a pet or a single photon emission computer uh, tomography computer tomography ct mri magnetic resonance imaging or an photoacoustic and ultrasound imaging or and combination of these two is currently available which is widely used nowadays uh, to uh, imaging most of that uh, diagnostic systems and finally well known and widely used uh, optical imaging this all imaging techniques uh, has and different capabilities these imaging techniques are able to provide an anatomical imaging, functional imaging, and molecular imaging. What is an anatomical imaging? These imaging systems are used for a visualization of an organs, tissues, say for an example, visualization of an bones. An X-ray fracture on an X bone can be visualized by an x-ray these systems can be used with and without that contrast agents the ct can be used to um used for visualization of a phone fracture without an uh, contrast agent similarly we can use the same mri scan with or without contrast agents to characterize that soft tissue molecules or in fat tissues molecules in our body or in an animal objects. This is an uh, anatomical imaging. Whereas that another thing is a functional imaging where we will get it an information related to a physiological process takes place at that level of a tissues tissue which can be done also with or without contrast agents we can say that uh, activity of a brain region can be monitored using a non-contrast enhanced functional mri as simply we can also tell it as a blood oxygen level dependent mri or in other cases for fusion of an blood vessels particularly in heart and brain can be visualized by using a contrast enhanced MRI or with an CT coupled with an angiography. So the combination of an imaging techniques can be utilized for a functional imaging. Now, we'll be coming into that uh, molecular imaging which is widely used at an in vitro level, which is not used in a uh, clinical practice uh, or in clinical level as a uh, continuous manner. Wherein which used to visualize the physiological process at a cellular and molecular level. That except for that magnetic resonance uh, spectroscopy, that molecular imaging can only performed with contrast agent. That is the difference between that anatomical, functional, and um, molecular imaging. Say for an example, using of a uh, fluorescent dyes. Say for I can put it as a fluoro L thymidine 
flood is can be used for visualizing that uh, solid tumors uh, by using an pet or we can use the sand uh, rgd uh, targeted micro bubbles and iron oxide particles uh, for visualizing that uh, receptor over expression on an endothelial cells uh, by means of an ultrasound and an mrna so that both techniques can be used uh, so that at a molecular level what is happening what is that this slide which will give us an information about an anatomical imaging functional and molecular imaging tools can be used at an organ tissues and cells and molecular levels if you see this pet and spet ct this two pet and spet can be used up to at tissue levels organ and tissue levels the ct can go into one functional or as well as sand tissues or more than the tissues whereas that mri can comes into an uh, cellular levels uh, um, we can record that functions so none of these systems are able to offer an a real time uh, molecular imaging so this uh, imaging can be done or carried out in that uh, in vitro conditions if you take that uh, radionucleotide imaging that is an postron uh, imaging uh, emission tomography so for we can use as an certain a radionucleotide like titanium iodine gadol in here can be used to uh, that can be left for in that circulation for longer period of time so the single photon emission computed tomography can be emitted from that signal from the tissues upon administration that can gives an information about that uh, tissue at an tissue level and particularly if you consider about as some magnetic resonance imaging it is a non ionizing imaging technique where which will able to produce a sense signal contrast from that soft tissues or that for soft tissues uh, by deducting nuclear spin of an hydrogen atoms which predominantly come from an water and fat in that human body this mri contrast agent can provide bright and dark contrast by accelerating t1 or t2 relaxation of one water proton respectively that means that t1 relaxation will gives us a bright area or a bright spot there is the t2 relaxation of an hydrogen atom in water will provide us a sand or dark area so this is a picture we can able to see that uh, without mri with a uh, mri scanning with a contrast agent uh, will give us a sand bright spot uh, there won't be an, any uh, dark spot if you using an any contrast agent uh, this uh, excuse me sir you are in mute notation sir Excuse me, sir. Subramanian, sir, you are in mute. Kindly unmute your mic, sir. You are able to see my my slides? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Sorry. Now. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah, just uh, see over here. That is, we'll be passing through an um, 
external uh, magnetic field that nothing will happen in that cases of a no contrast region if the contrast regions are there that will create an, a dark spot over there depending upon that relaxation between uh, generated by that hydrogen atoms with, with respect to an t2 and t1 uh, relaxation happening at an atoms <coughs> similarly that computer tomography can be used to give or provide an information about an anatomy where which we will be able to get it and three dimensional images uh, these nanoparticulate systems or an image techniques can be coupled with this ct to get it and more information about this uh, thermostatic agent at an life conditions now to say for an example, Sargoton synthesized a multifunctional Trendrimer entrapped gold nanoparticles, which has been linked with alpha tocopherol succinate and folic acid as an prognostic agent. And they are showed by utilizing that uh, CT, imaging that uh, cancerous cells, uh, both at an in vitro and an in vivo system, as well as uh, they were able to show improved therapeutic efficacy. Similarly, that lot of an optical imaging techniques are used, fluorescent, bioluminescent uh, probes are widely used. This techniques is well known to everyone, or as well as an um, ultrasound can be coupled with an um, light, which is called as a photoacoustic imaging which has a uh, capability to go further into an uh, 50 to 70 mm depth uh, so that which can give an more information about an tissues uh, or a region where we want to exploit it. Now, these, all these techniques has been conjugated or an hyphenated nowadays uh, in order to study about an prognostic system. That combination is providing better imaging capabilities. That's what I have given a certain information about over there. That is, and you can see from this slide either we can make a conjugation of an MRI with an optical system which will be able to provide information about co-localization of an migrating stem cells and co-validation of an accumulation of an targeting moieties, detection of an enzyme activity, visualization of a brain tumor can be obtained by these two hyphenation or an conjugation of these two techniques. Similarly, MRI and PET can be conjugated to for an soft tissue imaging, cardiac imaging, small animal imaging, and obtained advanced motion corrections also. Or in certain cases, that CT and PET has been combined for an tumor targeting, therapy monitoring, as well as an uh, getting a high quality imaging of an heart functions or an heart tissue cells. This also been called because as a micro CT, which is used for a uh, small animal imaging or an imaging of an um, bones, heart deposition of these uh, fats, all those things can be carried out by this combination of these two techniques. Now, again, there is a same combination CT with an aspect where, which can be used for a diagnosis of an coronary artery diseases. A specific patient specific attenuation corrections can be done. Nuclear imaging can be done. So, by using a different imaging techniques, these multifunctional uh, prognostic systems can be guided. Now, what is the specific function of these uh, particles, multifunctional particles? What kind of fun things can be done or modulated by using these uh, uh, particles? These particles may generate that signal generation signal that on exposure from an external sources. You can see from an A, there is an external radiation 
based on which this nanoparticulate system or a multifunctional nanoparticulate system can generate that signal. This mostly happen in MRI, CT, a fluorescent, up conversion imaging or an ultrasound imaging. Or otherwise, this particle itself generate a signal uh, in case of an using on a fan isotopes, so radionucleotide imaging, luminescence, chemiluminescence imaging. Or in certain cases, that energy can be converted by we'll be using and say for an example, light energy, that light energy can be converted into an releasing an nascent oxygen which will kill that particles or that light energy near NIR can be converted into an UV light. So that kind of an conversion or magnetism will be applied or an external current will be get applied, magnetism induced that will be generate that thermal. So according to that, there are three different kind of an therapies are possible like photothermal therapy, magnetic hypothermia, photodynamic therapy, sonodynamic therapy. That will be depends upon that energy conversion of nanoparticulate system designed by an us. Or this system can be used for a drug delivery or a targeting or sometimes which can be used for an catalytic activities also. By using that, we can able to get it in different multi modalities in multifunctional systems. So I like to focus at some of our therapies over here. That is a single modality phototherapy, which is called as a phototermal therapy, photodynamic therapy, or a combination therapy where the phototermal and photodynamic therapy can be combined and magnetothermal therapy, photohemotherapy, all, all those things can be modulated by combination of this or designing and proper multifunctional systems. We can see some of an uh, examples of this. The first case we can take it as a sun, magnetic hypothermia therapy where that magnetism will be used to convert and current into an electric thermal energy. So they vary will the patient will be injected with an magnetic nanoparticles of an uniform size of an 10 nanometers. So the patient will be subjected to an alternating magnetic field that magnetic particles can generate that heat by hysteresis uh, loss due to an uh, Brownian motion and eddy character. In turn, that will generate uh, the temperature within that uh, area of an cancerous cells uh, up to 142 to 46 degrees Celsius, which is sufficient to kill that uh, cancerous cells. So due to this, the patient able to get it a uniform heating. It is a non-invasive compared to a radiation therapy. So the patient can go for a multiple treatment. Uh, so he will be getting a better uh, effect compared to a radiation since that normal cells are not affected by these uh, mechanisms. So, this technique is already in a clinical trial at an uh, German. Now, how it is be happening that magnetic hyperthermia? There is that possibility of an generating that heat. The heat will kill that cell, or sometimes uh, that might uh, produce a vibration of that magnetic particles which has been encapsulated in that cells uh, due to one rotation or by oscillating that components present in that cell will be get destroyed so that which will able to produce a sun um, <coughs> programmed cell death or an apoptosis. Next, we can see that uh, one 
example magneto thermal drug delivery the system which has been developed which will able to deliver the drug in response to an uh, temperature first the systems will be injected then it will be localized to a tumor by using an external magnet then will be applying an external magnetic field the oscillating external magnetic field uh, which will generate that heat uh, that heat generation will be dissipated uh, so that that polymeric material will be uh, get opened the pores will be get opened uh, from which uh, the drug will be get delivered continuously once that heat generation stopped that the pores will get closer so that we can able to control the delivery in an programmed manner so i'll show on one example how this ion oxide can magnetically targeted drug delivery systems can be utilized uh, this ion oxide is an bi compatible and ma had as an magnetic properties which has been shown over here which is being coated by um, or an conjugated with an oleic acid but that oleic acid is, is an hydrophobic in nature when it is administered which will be cleared from an reticular endothelial system so quickly in order to avoid that uh, that entire system has been conjugated with an fluoronic polymers so which has is an hydrophilic hydrophobic and hydrophilic structures this is a system uh, in which uh, that paclitaxel and toxorubicin has been loaded by about dissolving the drug in an ethanol and added to that system on evaporation of an ethanol the drug has been loaded into this uh, systems they were able to show that a 5.4% weight percentage of an paclitaxel toxol or an 8.2% of an toxorubicin in combination has just been able to load on that systems so then that magnetic particles has been get separated by using an external magnetic field the other system has been removed that has been studied the particle size vary in that 100 nanometers that average uh, size has been the drug release for that uh, ion oxide from that ion oxide nanoparticle has been did for an 10 days by using an in vitro conditions this is an uh, image I like to show that at an in vitro level how this dalsorubicin solution and magnetic nanoparticles uh, showed prolonged therapy. So in first case you can see that uh, dalsorubicin solution and dalsorubicin nanoparticles which is able to show more fluorescent uh, in case of an dalsorubicin uh, nanoparticles. At an 24 hours there is some diminishing of an effect at 48 hours uh, no much fluorescent able to see in case of an doxorubicin solution but there is that nanoparticles is able to retain it is image or an uh, fluorescent image indicating that more times now i like to show one of them how these multifunctional Prognostic nano systems or an flat form can be used uh, by using a uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Excuse me, sir, slides are not. Yeah, yes. I, I understand. Yeah. Now it's okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And now we can take it as an example. One case study I like to uh, put it up, uh, which is recently published in 2008 by Chinese group, uh, wherein they have made it as a uh, uh, self-assembling system based on a uh, fluoroenyl methyl oxycarbonyl l leucine which is a uh, response to an uh, glutathione system. That system has been put it up into one chlorine E6. It is an curcumin derivatives which can be activated by using a light so that uh, nascent oxygen will be generated. So they have put it up this to 
they able to make it as some conjugation or self assembling of that systems to which they were also incorporating an magnesium or magnesium over there that system has been administered into an animal where the tumor has been already generated so after that we can see that uh, they administered that light which will activate that homerin or uh, chlorine e6 so what is happening over that tissue level this is our uh, image by using a magnetic resonance image mri now you can able to see this uh, the particles is able to get it into the cells very depending upon that uh, glutathione concentration within that cell these particulates or that self assembly will be uh, releases that encapsulated contents both the chlorine six e6 as well as san magnesium so with response to this uh, <coughs> exposure on light this chlorine e6 generate that nascent oxygen that nascent oxygen is able to kill that uh, cancer cells that entire process has been imaged by using an mri this is a san uh, multifunctional system wherein we use a san photodynamic therapy imaging and targeting by using a glutathione responsive all those things can be obtained with a single system this is an some of an example we can see it uh, by characterizing that system which shows a san um, functional system with uh, chlorine and size distribution is shown around a 100 nanometer size now they have also showed that uh, mm, release profile depending upon that uh, glutathione concentrations we can see from here that d figure i'm not concentrating on another thing so you can see from a mm, d figure which is mentioned over here we can able to get it uh, uh see that on response to one glutathione concentration at an in vivo condition that more amount of that uh, um, chlorine magnesium has been get uh, released that has been shown over here accordingly that imaging is also shown in presence of an glutathione there is a san greater amount of an um fluorescent signal as well as that uh, rvs generation is higher in compared to one pure chlorine e6 uh, with uh, e6 with glutathione concentration that clearly uh, gives an information that uh, working nature of this uh, multifunctional system they also showed us a um computer tomographic pictures how it has been visualized at a cellular level and they also showed by using a small animal imager by using a fluorescent technique uh, above which they were able to show that uh, how this fluorescent intensity has been get decreases on time process so at an initial concentration which has a san more amount of an fluorescent uh, when it times goes the fluorescent images or uh, frequency will be getting decreases so similarly they were able to shows and in case of an mri it is shown in an c where that initially that brightness is increasing zero time zero hour less one hour slightly increase at an four hours which will be going higher after an 24 hours that will be getting decreases up to an 72 hours they were able to monitor it uh, so you can see it is how to what extent uh, which is happening 
in the case of an uh, with respect to an intensity that both the cases is shown within one hour of an administration the fluorescent or an mri signal is going up uh, and getting decreases now this is an another uh, examples i like to show it over here um, which is currently or commercially available prognostic system which is an consisting of an uh, somatostatin analog peptide coupled with an 177 lu lutenin uh, dotate radio nucleotide systems just see it over here there is a sand uh, somatostatin analog which will be able to couple with an somatostatin receptors which is present on that uh, cancerous cells now this somatostatin analog is coupled with an a radionucleotide so that has been conjugated that will be administered to that patient uh, own administration that will be able to conjugate with that receptors you can clearly see it from this figure uh 177 le somastat statin analogs will be able to conjugate over here so after that conjugation that uh, we can internalize or that can be recorded by using an uh, scintigraphy so that uh, we can able to get it an imaging as well as which will be very specifically uh, kill that uh, cancerous cells so that once on internalization which will produce an uh, therapeutic beta radiation that will kills that uh, cancerous cells so this the therapy has been approved in 2018 by an fda that peptide receptor radionucleotide therapy with uh, 177 lu uh, dotate for the treatment of gastro entero entero pancreatic neuro entric uh, endocrine tumors this is a specific tumor which has been approved now we can also see that uh, how this treatment is effective in the case of an uh, somatostatin receptor positivity in a patient with uh, mast cell cancers there is that uh, in order to show that efficacy of the systems uh, i have put it over that pictures you can see that a and c that is some pre treatment and post treatment where they have used a gallium 68 and for as a contrasting agent uh, in uh, september 2018 that image has been taken dark field uh, indicating that uh, uh, presence of this uh, nucleotide uh, then on that uh, after that uh, which clearly indicates that cancerous tissue after that treatment in october they were able to show very very minimal amount of an cancerous uh, tissues uh, cancerous in the patient this is a tool a nucleotide coupled with an imaging of an mri and uh, as well as a sensor here that pet and ct scan can able to visualize that systems so another technology which is already coming up with is based on an uh, pork inhibitor which is already in and reached into a clinical trial uh, which has been developed by a company called uh, Thrognostics. Uh, is a protein found in cells and used to repair DNA in the nucleus of cells. When there is damage to DNA, the path binds to the brain to repair it. In this stage, we say the path is active. Once the repair is complete, the path is released from the DNA strand and becomes inactive. The cells which make up cancerous tumors divide far more rapidly than healthy cells, and this results in significantly more damage to DNA. Research suggests there is up to 1,000 times more active part in cancer cells than in healthy cells. Diagnostics, our pathway, or radio-labeled pathway inhibitor, is a new and exciting cancer treatment 
which seeks out active part, trapping it on the DNA. It does not affect the active part. Our part we will move in and out of cells until it finds the active part. So it passes free through healthy cells and accumulates in cancer cells in a highly targeted way. The R party binds to the active part in cancer cells, and from here, the radioactive payload is delivered, destroying the cancer cell. With many cells targeted in this way, the damage is multiplied, contributing to the destruction of the tumor. R party is a potentially game changing therapy in the fight against many different types of cancer. So this uh, video is also gives us an indication that uh, this radionucleotide based uh, therapies are coming up in that uh, market which will be able to provide and better marketing uh, strategies as well as uh, and market potential which has been focused uh, deep increase of 12.5% and annual growth rate uh, in that case from diagnostic systems Currently, by 25, there will be a more than 20 to 25 percentage of an increase in that market potential. Now, the most of that big guys, big giant, are coming into that uh, diagnostics area or that diagnostics systems. Now, with these uh, ideas, what is an imaging systems and what is and marketly what is going on we also developed uh, some of and systems at our lab uh, laboratory so which has been i like to show uh, in short the first case we have developed a uh, targeted delivery system for uh, delivering of an carpothesin to that breast cancer where we have used chosen as a nano emulsion as a carrier this nano emulsion has been loaded with an uh, capothesin as well as a magnetic nanoparticles or an ion oxide particles uh, to target into that cancerous cells and we were wanted to show uh, with uh, with or without magnetic field uh, how these efficacies are getting diffuse in case of a nano emulsion. So for which we have uh, screened that oil solubility of an capothesin. We have selected a combination of that system, which is able to show better solubility. Uh, in that system, we were able to show a uh, better solubility of fan. Um, benzyl alcohol and captax 300 uh, up to 200 mg per ml so based on that uh, oil we have selected and surfactant has been selected we have constructed pseudo ternary diagrams by having an oil uh, composition in the ratio of an 3 to 1 benzyl alcohol and captax 3 300 water and chumin AT and vitamin EPPGOs as surfactant systems. This has been used at a different surfactant mixture ratios at an 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2, and 2 is to 1. We were able to get it at more nano emulsion forming region in the cases of an surfactant mixture 2 is to 1. From that, we have identified some a formulation where we kept it as a sand uh, oil as a constant of 15 percent uh, and surfactant mixture has been varied between and 20 to 30 uh, percent similarly we have also incorporated one percentage of an magnetite material in case of magnetic nano emulsion all this has been characterized for particle size and other things now i'll be putting over here uh, we have used uh, instead of conjugating and another agent uh, as an, uh, for an imaging purpose that campothesin itself having a fluorescent properties so that has been explored for imaging of that systems we can see that uh, fluorescent clear fluorescent uh, at an uh, 1000 x and then 400 x you can able to see that clearly indicated us the presence of this particulate system 
in the or that encapsulation of the drug in uh, nano uh, emulsion this is that above pictures show the temperatures of the systems wherein uh, the magnetite which has been su surrounded by this uh, oil system that has been clearly shown we also showed uh, how this in vitro targeting potential are there we have taken this nano emulsion system exposed to an uh, external magnet within and 5 minutes which is able to say we can able to see all these magnetic particles are able to attach it over here that is a so we have studied an in vitro release as again we have studied about it and cytotoxic potential by using an mtp assay where we can able to show that magnetic particle uh, loaded nano emulsion is having um, better decrease in an cell viability as well as we have also shown that uh, this system drug free capothecin free system does not produce any genotoxicities uh, by alkaline comatacin then we have indices that uh, 41 cells uh, in bopsy bopsy mice we have created a cancer after that we have uh, divided into an two groups uh, that animals which has been generated breast cancer has been divided into one two groups which is used for an passive and active targeting after uh, in case of an passive targeting that uh, uh, nano emulsion will be get administered without a magnetic particle will be administered which is not been uh, visualized and in case of an active targeting that external magnetic field will be placed uh, so that uh, material will be targeted into an cancerous tissues so after that different tissues has been taken from that animal we have photographed you can able to see this from here the breast cancer tissues are able to show better targeting of an uh, campothecin molecules you can bottom you can able to see the bright fluorescent and merged picture which clearly shows the presence of an uh, capothecin within that cells this is what we were able to do it by combination of an magnetisms as well as the sand dye we can uh, act as that uh, drug imaging can be uh, visualized and prove that one so similarly we have developed a photodynamic therapy for uh, treating an age related macular degeneration which is happening in the eye where that photosensitizer will be get administered what is called photodynamic therapy wherein photosensitizer will be administered which will be after a specific period of time which will be exposed to one light source on that exposure that will be get uh, produces and nascent oxygen which will kills that uh, uh, cancerous cells or uh, newly forming destroy that newly forming blood vessels so one such drugs we have taken at as a sun hypocerline b uh, which is at a ground state normally what is happening on excitation of an light on initially which will be on ground state on exposure to an light which will be goes into an excited state and then which will be trying to comes into an ground state uh, during that time which will be undergoes an intercrossing system with that triplet state to an singlet state uh, at the time which will produces a sun uh, radical that oxygen molecule which will be get out style so that from an molecular oxygen which will be produces an nascent oxygen which will be able to produce an apoptosis uh, or an anti-angiogenic effect this has been visualized or this is an market product which is already available that is an vertiforfin for the treatment of an amd you can see this is a picture of an eye there are a lot of newly 
formed blood vessels on eye which will be uh, responsible for loss of vision on the treatment you can see that number of blood vessels are able to get it uh, decreases so based on that concept we have made that uh, polymeric nanoparticles by using an PLGA TPGOs where that uh, silver has been added silver nanoparticles to which the hypocerulean B is also been conjugated so hypocerulean B and silver has been encapsulated in an PLGA TPGS polymer which has been administered into that system and we have exposed it to that light uh, we were able to show how this can be useful for the uh, control of an newly formed blood vessels or for the treatment of AMD. Now, initially we have synthesized that nano silver and we have synthesized that uh, uh, PLGA TPGS polymer and characterized by using a different techniques like uh, NMR, TGA and um, IR and after characterization we have prepared this uh, uh, polymeric system by using a nano precipitation techniques you can see it is a sand drug loaded uh, uh, systems very clearly there is some pure nano and um, hypocerulean B this is a combination of the system after that, we have characterized or uh, optimized that uh, system by using a statistical design. I'm not going to in detail about that. Anyway, uh, we were able to optimize and we characterized further the system by using a thermal analysis also. Thermotogram as well as an UV spectra. Where that uh, hypocerline B encapsulated nanoparticles are able to show better UV spectrum that indicates that uh, which has a sense surface flossum and effect in turn you will be getting a better UV uh, uh, radiations or an absorption. Again we want to show that uh, that nanoparticles has that uh, roughness so that if that roughness of the particles are greater which is reported to have higher percentage of an surface flossum and effect so in turn which will be able to generate a more amount of an radiation from that uh, light source that will enhance the formation of an um, nascent oxygen we could be able to show that uh, the roughness has been enhanced while increasing of a concentration of an uh, silver nanoparticles on it you can see from the pictures the pure hypocerulean b nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles where that uh, roughness has been get enhanced uh, uh, nearly an five-fold uh, compared to one normal nanoparticles. This is a temperature and XRD we have done. So as usual, we have also done in vitro release and raw much spectrum analysis has been shown in order to show that again, which is having the capability to uh, release us that uh, um, better nascent oxygen or the surface plasma and effect uh, or higher with an silver loaded nanoparticulate systems. Again, we want to uh, confirm that to what extent which is able to produce that single oxygen, which has been quantified by an iodimetric method. We were able to show that uh, hypocerline B silver capsulated nanoparticles were able to show uh, higher singlet uh, production compared to an hypocerline B loaded nanoparticles but you can able to see that there is some degrees in that are pure and a nanoparticulate system at an in vitro levels in order to confirm this uh, uh, efficacy we have used as an anti-angiogenic assay by uh, cam assay 
they have taken as indices that formation of a new blood vessels in an egg and treated and we are able to show that you can see very clearly the before treatment and an after treatment that newly blood vessels formed it and see d you can see that that is a sent pictures showing clearly that blood vessels which has been ruptured very clearly after that treatment that is an efficacy of this uh, photodynamic therapy by incorporating that nano system as well as the light so again we have captured that images we can able to see to what extent the rupture is happening so we have subjected into an confocal also that images is not been shown over here anyway um so this is how we can show that uh, rupturing of this uh, um, blood, newly formed blood vessels as well as we have shown a phototoxic effect in in, in vitro conditions uh, uh, that is and uh, depending upon the time as well as we found that uh, we 25 micromolar concentration of a photosensitizer is a sun sufficient when you are increasing the concentration uh, there will be a kunching effect is happening so that uh, from 10 to 25 that 25 we found that optimal for that activities again we were able to show that permeation of that uh, uh, drug molecule into this uh, tissues or back of the eye by using that uh, nanoparticulate system developed by us so for which we have taken an um, rabbit to which we have here margin we have injected that uh, our polymeric system after that uh, cornea has been isolated i has been inoculated inoculated or uh, separated then we have dissected that different points of the part of that eye which has been subjected to quantification for the presence of an hypocerulean by hplc which has been shown over here at an as well as we have imaged the tissues the hypocerulean b is also having a fluorescent capability so we have imaged the tissues we could able to find it uh, the tissues were able to show the presence of an um, fluorescent images as well as that hypocerulean concentration by the way we can say that uh, we could able to generate a better uh, therapeutic system for the treatment of an amd in overall i'll put it as a sam uh, what will be that uh, challenges for in the case of an multifunctional prognostic systems so the safety profile of this nano prognostic system need to be uh, obtained at a large scale uh, therapeutic uh, or large scale populations and these multifunctional systems having a multiple unit production at a large scale is a very 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 big challenge where that artificial intelligent uh, coupled with nanoparticle productions is already in progress people are working by using an optical imaging coupled with an artificial intelligent uh, how this nanoparticle systems are forming and generating how it can be controlled in a mass production that kinds of work has been already started in and we hope that uh, within few years of time with you all your inputs uh, in scientific uh, attempt uh, we could able to develop a uh, uh, scalable or an industry level multifunctional therapeutic systems above all there is a big gap between a scientific community and a regulatory authorities uh, which will be hampering that bringing into this new kind of a system into this uh, market with this uh, information i like to thank the organizer uh, for providing me the opportunity thank you one and all for uh, listening um, my talk thank you over to that organization organizer
I like to take up if some questions are there. Yes, sir. Requesting the participants to post the queries in the chat box, or you can unmute yourself and raise the question to the server. There is no question, sir. Uh, it was very nice, uh, nicely deliberated, sir. Actually, so you just clearly mentioned what are the biomedical applications of uh, nanoparticles, especially in the case of uh, the diagnostics, and uh, you always find a way to get it done and uh, done as well as today now. So. From the management and the principal side, uh, I just uh, take this opportunity to present a certificate of appreciation to you, sir. So kindly accept it. And uh, thank you so much for joining with us on this day. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Yes, sir. So the, the certificate, the hard copy of the certificate will be presented to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.